It's the message, Carbon Sound Music for Life. Sonny here with another exciting interview. And uh, this is dope because I met you twice, okay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Once when we first started Carbon Sound, and then the second time was at the beat battle for Carbon Sound. So in the studio, because I'm just talking and I ain't said the person's name, Minneapolis creative and community curator of photo, film, design, and more. We have Awa Mali. This is the person who, when we first came out with Carbon Sound, uh, you're responsible for a lot of the imaging that we had. So thank you and welcome for pulling up. <laughs> thank you for having me. Cool. So, uh, so I mean, I've, I, know, I have a list of things that we can go over, but I always like to let people tell the you know the the audience who they are i think you do so much better it's gonna sound canned and, <laughs> and all boxed and everything when i do it so let us know and, and you know who are you who is awa mali um so i am a minneapolis-based artist and curator and so much more okay. um i'm togolese so my parents immigrated here um from at, toga yeah from togo okay togo yeah togo okay. Okay. so I, i've been living in minneapolis ever since so a lot of what i do is like center around community uh, my identity and just like creating art honestly so so you're you a lot of the stuff what's okay you got photo film design and more are is what would you say is your flagship profession what would you how would you like to be how would you like to be called on like what what what's the, the projects for you today is it in film design or photo mm. or photography should i say honestly i would say because I do all of that stuff now, yeah. I kind of don't want to be identified by individual things. Ooh, I'd rather okay. be identified by, like, my passion. Okay, which, which is? is? Just, like, caring about art and people. And storytelling. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take it back because I, 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 love, I love when I see the adult version of what <laughs> your little person was when you were little. So tell me how you got into this, how you became a, a curator of, of stories in the community. How, how, where did this start? You say you started as a teen. Mm-hmm. So, like, give us the backstory on that. What, ooh, what did you use? What tech did you use? Because you ain't had no camera phones or nothing <laughs> like that, did you? Um, well, I would say, so my first visual art medium was, like, taking photos on my Nintendo 3DS. Okay, okay, okay. See, that's what I, yes. I, I, see, I was going to ask you this before the interview. Like, no, I need to know what tech you use. <laughs> okay, so tell me about that. My daughter had a, a, a Nintendo 3DS, but mm-hmm. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it too much. So mm-hmm. how did you do that? Was it, like, screenshots mainly? Or? Um, well, they had a little camera on mine. So I would okay. just take pictures with that. And then from there, I had an iP- no, iPod Touch, the one with okay. the camera on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I would take pictures on that. And then eventually I got... Like a real camera. Okay, but, like, wait. So you went from iPod to just camera? You didn't know phones or nothing in between? Oh. Um, no, no Polaroids? No... I'm trying to remember. <laughs> no Kodaks? <laughs> I think... No, I think I went from... Because I think when I got my first phone, I wasn't really using it for photography. Like, I would take pictures on it, but... So you would use... I your... got a phone pretty late, like, in my teenage years, versus, like, I guess what other people would get so a phone. You, okay, so you would use your Nintendo 3S for photography, but not the actual phone? No. Okay. Because like, I think I think having an iPhone and like getting getting into photography happened pretty like I don't remember the dates, but okay. I think they happened pretty close to each other. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what was it on the DS that was like I want to take a picture of this? What was it that you saw? Anything. It was anything. Well, yeah. For me, photography, I would just take pictures of everything. So like my friends, I asked because, nature. Like, what, so what what inspires you? Are you like you're a teen? So what was what inspired you? Your friends, the neighborhood, uh, what? Literally all of that. Life. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Everything, as a everything, team, everything you're looks looking... so beautiful. Everything is so interesting. <laughs> okay, so it started on the 3DS. <laughs> and then, like, what did you do with the pictures? Did you keep it on the... Yeah. Or did you ever print them out and make it, like, real? Or No. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> maybe, okay. Maybe, maybe a Facebook post, maybe an okay. Instagram post. But it was mostly just sitting on my okay. devices. Okay, so it was just like a hobby. Mm-hmm. And then you go to, you said, you said you went from 3DS to... I iPod, iPod, touch. iPod, right, mm-hmm. and then the iPhone, and then you weren't really into the iPhone. So, what? When was the moment when you were like, "Nah, I want to take this serious"? When, like, when was that moment? Um, it was because cameras you, is expensive. They I'm are told. expensive, <laughs> so you had to be locked in to make that decision. So, so, my dad had a Canon, and I would never touch my dad's Wait, stuff. What's Canon for the rest of us? Canon camera. Like he had a, okay. a digital uh, camera. Okay, and it was around my junior or senior of high school when like people have hobbies and you're applying yeah. for colleges yeah. and stuff and yeah. they're like oh we want to see extracurricular things and I was yeah. like oh I don't have extracurricular see, activities see you disrespecting the 3DS okay <laughs> <laughs> see if you had printed it out <laughs> if I see if I had printed it out I would have that you evidence. didn't know you didn't know <laughs> and at the time I was in a um, like social justice group with my friends and we were yeah. throwing events and I was like oh this is a perfect opportunity 
um, you know, I'm in this club, we're doing mm-hmm. events, we need documentation, like, I should just start now. Like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to start now. And I okay. just I just started then. So, what, I mean, like, what is what does that mean? You documented what? Like, what is... So, we had, uh, like, What education. was the first thing you documented? Oh, I think we did, uh, I'm trying to remember now, Let's see... We did, I think it or was. Or the second like, or third, whichever one. <laughs> whichever was, one you remember. We did this educational pop-up um, okay. um, at if Green Room. It was like the old, old Green Room when okay. it was just a magazine. Okay. Um, and we did this, like, educate yourself, like, I think panel and, like, mini workshops. So we were we were trying to oh. have our, like, peers educate themselves around yeah. social justice issues. And I documented that, and that was really cool. And so that's where the storytelling like element because at first you're just documenting Mm -hmm. when did you when were you like i'm doing when did it hit you that you wanted it to be storytelling versus i'm just doing this for somebody like when Mm. did when did you decide that that's how you wanted to use this 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 weapon of choice (laughs) okay because i know you know where that's from right no you don't i don't okay well we're gonna i'm gonna make sure i got the name correctly (laughs) because it is a minneapolis or minnesota uh um, I can't think of his of his hooks, head, bells. Can't think of his name, but he said it's a weapon of his choice, mm-hmm. and he was here, and he's got family members here. So I'm gonna make sure I get the name when we okay. go to break. But uh, yeah, I definitely got to drop that one on you. Yeah, teach <laughs> that's, me. That's teach Minnesota me. history. Okay, so you do this project, and then like, what happens after that? Um, honestly, Did you I just go anywhere? I just continue. So we were still doing events, and I would document that and then of course there were like protests i would document that and then um it was Wait, around senior what year. was the first protest you documented oh no uh-huh <laughs> i believe it was it was either jamar clark or trayvon martin it's so sad because okay. at that time there were so many protests go back to back yeah so i can't really remember but right. i believe it was either one of those is it did it stick with you because of what you saw or that you were the one that was called to document it or I think at that time, mostly because it was my friends that were, like, leading protests and, like, giving speeches. Wow. And so it was just, like, just knowing, like, at that age and our demographic. How old are you around? Um, probably, like, 17. Wow. And you're documenting protests? Mm-hmm. I like how you just casually, <laughs> like, you know, this is what, this is what the average 17-year-old knowing. You know, uh, <laughs> we document history. I feel like history. we're really engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like at that time, it felt... It Did was, you understand what was happening? Uh, a little bit. Okay. But I feel like at that age, too, we were all so young. Yeah. So we knew what we had to do, but we didn't fully understand, like, what exactly, like, this meant. How do you, I mean, how do you feel about it now when you look back on it? Oh, traumatized. You tra- <laughs> Is it, uh, are those scenarios more traumatizing for, for I mean, I guess I can't, because you'd have, I guess I can't ask you that question. Like, do you feel like you feel it more because you have pictures, it's in your head, mm-hmm. like, visually, so... Do you feel like you experience it, the protest or whatever you're documenting differently? Um, at that time, mm-hmm. um, it's more just being present. So I feel like I feel the same way as any other person at a protest would feel. Right. Uh, but definitely because those images stay with me forever. I feel like right. other people you are in the moment and then they're just memories. Right. But for me, I have like exact photo replication of like those moments so it really does hit hard and then also just looking back at the different people who may be here may have may not, not be, be here anymore right. um, and also just knowing how much that time period affected people oh my goodness mm. wow so we're gonna get in a little deeper than that i need to know because i want to know about the work you're doing now in the studio i have awa mali minneapolis creative and community curator she hooked us up with our photos for carbon sound she also helped curate our beat battle that mm-hmm. we had was it last year or was it year before was it I think that was last year. I think it was last year. year. It's all the years running together, the last really, fall. For real. <laughs> so we're going to continue on with the work you're doing now so that we can support you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and if you know if somebody needs a photographer, holler at our. Okay. So we'll be right back. Any songs you want me to play in the meantime? Anything off the top of your head? Do you have Ashake? No, but we got something that might sound like that. Okay. <laughs> Give me two more artists that we could throw on, possibly. Uh, Thames and Wizkid. Okay, bam. I like that. We could do that. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. We are in the studio with Awa Mali on The Message, Carbon Sound Music for Life. This is Music Class. Don't go nowhere. Boom, you too. We also be doing the stream thing, and so that's why I got to say it like that. Really? Yeah, so be yeah, So we want to let the YouTube know that they get in the behind the scenes of the stream. Shout out, YouTube. Yeah, All right. So <laughs> it's The Message, Carbon Sound Music for Life. You are in music class. Sonny, your radio friend, in the studio with Minneapolis creative and community curator. She does photo, film, design, and more. And she's a little bit traumatized by it, but she's she's <laughs> she's processing it and using it for the greater good of the community. Awa Mally, thank you so much for being here. And I, sh- I shouldn't laugh about the 
tra- I mean, trauma does change us, though. It, it does. does. It really and does. And honestly, that really is a good description because <laughs> I do all this art stuff, but there is a lot of emotions that come with it. Because it's art, and art is an expression of, like, the human soul. People mm-hmm. are expressing themselves, and, you know, whatever comes out is what comes mm-hmm. out, and then however it touches it, it touches us. Mm-hmm. And for you to be a photographer and... I don't know. I feel like you really, you have a different perspective than the rest of us. Like Mm -hmm. you said, we go and we experience it and then we go, bye. (laughs) And whereas this is your work, this is important to you. You're Mm -hmm. telling a story. So the, I would presume that the images have to, uh, have to touch you in a way so that you can effectively tell the story you just shot. So like, so how are you, how are you doing this work now? How, because you went from Nintendo 3DS, (laughs) iPod iPhone, we're taking it serious, we're documenting now, mm-hmm. we're documenting the protest. Now, where does that lead us? What are we doing now? What are we doing now? <laughs> um, so we were documenting the protest, yes. and that went to like just taking pictures of people, yeah. you know, their headshots, or their birthdays, yeah. or events. And now, I'm actually just chilling and processing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Why? Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you not working nonstop? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because that's unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, Western society might have a few right. words. But. but yeah, starting at, I think, what, 17, 18, um, I just realized it was nice to just continue and do all the things and grow mm. and have all these opportunities. But I realized, like, I, I did want to stop and pause and reflect and think about, like, what I want the next couple of years of this art mm-hmm. um, thing to look like for me and feel like, too. Because mm-hmm. I realized it's way more than just pretty things or cool events like there is a lot of um emotion and intention going into it and i'm like i want to be able to manage that well what do you feel like people don't know about photographers what are some unknown truths about the work of photography because mm. i mean i personally i feel like what you just said was one of them mm-hmm. like I, I do i feel like you know we because we got our camera mm-hmm. phone you know we just click 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 and oh girl <laughs> that's tea and then you don't think about the work as a photographer like you got to go home with this stuff yes and you're processing it sometimes that you're you got a home studio or whatever or, or your own personal studio so like what are some untold truths about photography that you feel like you want people to know i would say that um in my experience i photograph uh moments for people that maybe they may have never had the opportunity to. Yeah. So maybe I'm taking like their first professional headshots yeah. or I'm taking photos of like somebody's wedding, you know. And because wow. I'm like a friend or a community member, like it's at a more affordable weight rate yeah. or they're more comfortable. But also it's like the only time they've been able to do that. Right. And so sometimes in unfortunate cases I'm like, oh, I I've taken the best pictures this person has ever had. Yeah. Or their most recent photo. Yeah. Or on the special day, like I'm the one, I'm the one that did that. These are my photos. Yeah. Like I'm the one that gave them that, I guess, opportunity. And sometimes it's really, it's really joyous. Yeah. Like it's really nice to be able to be like, to have people share photos with their family members. And I see people like continue to share those photos. And I'm like, wow, like they really love these yeah. photos. Like this, yeah. these photos are going to mean something like for the rest of their lives. Wow. Um, and then sometimes on the other hand, it's like, okay. wow, like, <laughs> like I took these photos yeah. and like these are, I guess, like, maybe the last moments someone was able to, like, document this person in their life. That's cool. Why? I, again, I, I wouldn't, because I, we're constantly taking mm-hmm. pictures, like, our, you know, the raggedy pictures that your grandkids going to see one day. <laughs> and you don't think, like, that's your, I wouldn't have thought that's my work. When I mm-hmm. see a picture, I don't think that's my work. Mm-hmm. I don't think that. And so that's, like, an unknown connection to your photography. And then, and some, po- some photos do be eaten. So, yeah. yes, we appreciate the work, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> How do you feel as a photographer about all the filters and stuff that you see on apps and how, like how do you feel about that uh like just filters like just like filters colors, how do you or... feel about how do you feel how that affects the storytelling because we're all telling our own stories mm-hmm. on our own social media do you use filters on your social media uh not on my social well it depends on okay. my story i do because okay. i like i like my things to do you like glittery little... stuff glittery yeah. no okay <laughs> You look no dis- completely glitter. disgusting. No glitter. Here. You have you have a bubbly kind of shiny glittery kind of. <laughs> I'm sorry. No I, glitter. I read here. you completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like I know they do have some type of filters where they don't like change the whole composition of your mm-hmm. face, but they'll put like a shimmery background. Mm-hmm. And stuff. I like those. Okay. What type of filters do you like? Do you think it's cool that don't mess with like your your personality, your uh, your own like beliefs about photography? Um, I like 
colored fi- filter. Okay. Like when they just like make it more saturated or yeah, they give it yeah. like a different hue. Like I like that stuff. Okay. Yeah. But when we start going into changing. Yeah. Then it's like, all right. <laughs> how do you Let's f- take it back. How do you feel about AI? Mm. Okay. I like AI. Can you tell the difference? Can you as a photographer tell the difference? Because I be can because some, some things are a little too smooth. Yeah. It's in the smoothness. Like it's it's just too smooth where it kind of looks like a painting. Yeah. And like a photo wouldn't look like that. As a know? photographer, what do we need to be looking out for AI so that we not getting fooled? Because baby, mm-hmm. I be getting fooled. <laughs> I would say like it's in the details. Okay. Like if it just looks Them fingers? too the fingers, but now the fingers are like they saw that. cleaned it up. They yeah. saw the fingers, so it's really just in the detail. It's kind of hard, but it's in the details. Like if it okay. looks too much like a painting, or if it looks too good, then it's like no. Okay, okay. Humanness is like imperfect, you know. Right, right, and the right. AI just be looking too smooth, too, too flat. It okay, looks too flat, too flat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and there's like you said, hues and things like that in real life, mm-hmm. depth and. Mm-hmm. Okay, so thank you. I try because they really convincing. Good luck to all of us. Honestly. <laughs> I'm like, good luck to us. <laughs> do you do you plan on using like working with AI in your work in the future at all for storytelling, or is that like complete? Are you like, no, I want to stick to the rawness of photography. Maybe in like the planning phase, I do like using AI for like maybe creating images you haven't been able to like take a photo of yet, and yeah. just like getting those out, figuring out what that looks like, storyboarding. But I do not see myself using it in like my actual work that I put out. And you're right now. You're still deciding. You're kind of you've. So you're just basically processing everything you've done in, mm-hmm. what, the last, what, five, six, seven years, mm-hmm. something like that? And you're did, still determining where you... Do you have any idea of where you might want to go with your photography? Um, uh, I just know I want to do more work that resonates with me. And what is that? What does that mean? Uh, just storytelling about my own personal life and how I see the world. I feel like I've been able to show that through the work that I've done, but it's just like in collaboration with how other people need me to show up sometimes. And so now I want to do more work that's very specifically centered around what I feel and how I see the world. Wow, so you want more of you in your work. Mm-hmm. That's a pivotal moment. I, uh, I, I felt that in radio. I felt mm-hmm. like, wow, I'm doing all this radio for everybody else. What about my little stuff? So I feel you. Mm-hmm. And that, that, is a, that does happen in a career. So that's really cool. I looked it up. The person who said his camera was his weapon of choice, and I got to make sure I show up on the Carpet Sound audience because I be, can't be talking about the Minnesota music scene, and I don't re- be respecting the uh, the legends. Mm-hmm. That is the Gordon Parks that said I should have known that. The camera was the weapon of choice, so I just want to make I sure the audience that. understand we respect the Minnesota legends here. Okay? I should have known that. So, but yeah, go check it out because I learned about Gordon Parks when I was I did a little TV with uh, SPNN, mm-hmm. and uh, I learned about Gordon Parks through that. So that's I always like to ask the photographers like. Y'all know about him. I know about really Gordon intense. Parks, but I'm, I'm bad with quotes and dates. Oh, and that's stuff okay. Like that. well, I mean, I was bad with it too. You see, I forgot. So. <laughs> but yeah, I love Gordon Parks. Like, I feel like we don't show him enough love. Well, both. That's why it was important yeah. to make sure I said it right. <laughs> so, so that said, where can we like? We're gonna see you in the cut helping us with carbon sound. Like, where can we? <laughs> where can we find you? Working because uh 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 uh. Before we go, mm-hmm. um, reviving roots wellness. Yeah, what's that about? Yeah. Uh, so I work at reviving roots as our community curator, mm-hmm. and so I'm um, doing a lot of like events and social media and content there. Okay. And we have a blog party coming up this Friday on the 16th. Oh wow. Um, but yeah, I'm there all the time from 12 to 7. So okay. if you come. Between 12 and 7, you'll see me there, and we can hang out. I can show you all things about therapy, yoga, wellness. Ooh. We can just talk. I can give you a tour. It's a really nice space for black, um, just black-centered care. I like, oh, that's that's just hearing it. That was a great promo. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded very soothing to me. Rooted in a homemade. Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, what's that about? Uh, So back to, like, creating things that I need. And so... A home is how you say home okay. in my native language. Oh. And so that's kind of like my venture where I'm like, okay, this is how I create more opportunities for me to center my ideas. Oh, okay. So you really you really processing it like that. I'm really processing. Okay. I know just people say they process it, they really don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I take I take it serious over here. <laughs> Pure water radio. I know about that. Because that's what that's what pulled up and curated the beat battle mm-hmm. for Carbon Sound. Okay, yeah. Pure Water Radio, okay. And then reload it. Mm-hmm. What's that about? Oh, and shout out to radio host Minneapolis DJ Quay. I want to say, yeah. And I say that because I literally had a VO audition mm-hmm. and I had to say that DJ's name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I don't know if I got the audition now. <laughs> That's probably because I messed that up. So shout out to DJ Quay. <laughs> Make sure I say that name right. But um, Reloaded, what's that yes. about? Um, so Reloaded was just me, Nardos, and Kita. Okay. Um, other women uh, artists in the Twin Cities. And we were doing a lot of art in different spaces and realized that a lot of the things that we were involved in, we were usually the only women. Mm. Um, or we didn't feel like the people that were in the front-facing positions yeah. in a lot of art spaces were women and we just didn't feel like that was right or equitable and fair and okay. so we decided to start reloaded so we can like work with more women together and like being the more front-facing uh planning and organizing like things that. yeah reloaded mm-hmm. okay <laughs> now nah, reload that all that <laughs> <laughs> where did the name come from is that like a photography thing no it's actually oh, okay. it's actually from dj that's, like, what I was, that's why i know it from music and now nah, we play take that out tape out and reload that. <laughs> so I, that's why i was like wait a minute where'd you get there okay okay because nardos is a nardos is a dj okay okay so your stuff is like like you said all art music film these are all the things that you're doing right now no oh that you've done work for. Yeah. Got you. Okay, so you are just, you working at our Mali Institute right now. Okay, yeah. getting a PhD in me. Okay. Yes. Okay, so so should, so should in the meantime, we can go check out all of your work within these places. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're basically on a spiritual hiatus right now. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I respect I'm, that. I'm on a sabbatical. I'll be coming okay. back January 2025. Okay, you know what? A lot of us feel that way. Not even going to lie in an election you year. You know? <laughs> Artistically, you mean. <laughs> so, um, where can we find you? Um, I'm like online. These, like these people don't know Awa already, because you be everywhere. <laughs> but for those of us who are new to yes. Awa Mali, how do we find you? Uh, I'm on all social platforms at A-W-A-M-A-L-L-Y, and I'm at Reviving Roots, okay. Monday through Friday, 12 to 7, uh, some Saturdays. You can find me there, and usually out in community. I always tell people, like, I don't know where I'm going to be, but I'm going to be somewhere. I know in, all, I know in a <laughs> lot of pictures. I know you by your pictures and where you be in the community before I actually sit down with you <laughs> and talk to you. So. I'll be somewhere she she will be I'm, <laughs> I'm sure of it so i just wanted to tell you thank you so you can go in somebody else's picture right now <laughs> is that a photographer thing like you know how to end up in the in the shot <laughs> I, don't, I don't try i actually try to stay away from the shot <laughs> and that's why that's why the camera always gonna find you so uh but when you when you pop back out again and show ninjas can mm-hmm. you come here and show us your next yes, project please okay yes. okay cool all right so with that i can release you <laughs> thank you awa Thank you so much. All right, y'all. We're going to get back. I think I got enough time uh, to do some music class. So uh, stay tuned. Don't go no place. It's the message. Carbon Sound Music for Life. Thank you, Awa Molly. (laughs)